Hey, welcome people. Welcome to a very cold, bitterly cold South Africa. We got a cold front coming through here, so everybody is running around in jackets and beanies. It's really, really unusually cold. But uh, welcome to today's um, devotion. We're talking about blessed are the persecuted. It comes from Matthew 5. It's one of the Beatitudes. It's the last one we'll be looking at. And we started yesterday by talking about persecution is part of the deal. Jesus told us to expect it. Paul tells us that this is going to happen. Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. And if you're carrying a cross, it would intimate that there's a bit of persecution and pain maybe down the road. But as believers, we have to acknowledge that this is going to be, if it's not already, part of the Christian life. And it varies for different people in different places and it comes in different shapes and forms. But we're just talking about the basics of what persecution looks like. Today, we want to ask the question, why would anyone want to persecute people who apparently, according to Matthew chapter 5, would appear to be such nice people? You know, people who strive after peace. Nothing wrong with that. I like people like that. People who are meek and not arrogant. Man, I like people like that. I don't know about you. People who are humble. I, I'm drawn toward people like that. I, I don't do the arrogant very well. And we're looking at this and saying, why would the world hate what we would look at and say, what, what great qualities these Christian people have? Well, the passage is very clear. You don't have to be too bright to see it. He says, blessed are those who are persecuted for what? For righteousness' sake. For righteousness. We spoke the last couple of weeks about hungering and thirsting for righteousness. That means we're hungry and thirsting for God. We want to do things God's way. And over the course of history, human history, the world has hated people who do that. The world has hated people who choose to live a godly lifestyle. They don't understand why, but Satan has put it in their hearts to stand up against those kind of people in that form of lifestyle. You see, if you want to be persecuted, then just live the first seven Beatitudes. Just live those. And watch what the world does to you. Watch what the world says about you. And the 45 degree angle look that people look at you with because they don't understand. They don't understand. And this is Satan's tool. There's no other religion in the world in present history that's persecuted like us. There's no other religion in the world that doesn't understand us. Isn't it crazy? You can be fanatical about anything. You can be fanatical about about dinkies and and cars and and yoga and and even some of these other more way out kind of religious things. You can be fanatical about those things, and nobody says a word. Somebody thinks, "Oh, that's a little unusual." Or maybe that's quite cute that you have got such an interest in something else. But the moment you show an interest in Christianity and following Jesus and hungry and thirsting after righteousness, that's it they're after you because that is what proof that we have that satan hates us and our faith so very much so when we look at why we're persecuted we're persecuted for righteousness sake now i'm going to tell you people this is nothing new back in the garden you know when cain killed abel why did cain kill abel was because Abel's offering was a righteous offering. And Cain couldn't stand the righteousness of Abel, so he did what persecutors did. He, he tried to kill him physically, and he did. And he persecuted him, not because he was a bad guy or because he didn't like him. He persecuted him because he couldn't stand his righteousness. Follow the pattern all the way through history. You see Saul persecuting David. Why? Why would Saul, the king, who was given this great responsibility, responsibility be threatened by a young, a young shepherd boy because he couldn't stand David's righteousness. He couldn't stand David's connection with God and his love for his creator. He couldn't stand that. He didn't hate David. He hated what David stood for because David stood for righteousness. Why did they kill Jesus? They don't kill people for nothing. They killed him because they hated his righteousness. And everything that Jesus stood for, the scribes and the Pharisees couldn't stand because it was the epitome of righteousness. So if you don't want to be persecuted, there's an easy way out. Very easy. Just don't live the Beatitudes. You know, laugh at the world's jokes. That's fine. 
Yeah, they won't laugh at you if you do that. They won't mock you if you do that. They won't persecute you if you do that. Do business just like them, and they're not going to knock you. They won't persecute you. Make a, Just go on like them and behave like them, drink like them, carouse like them, and you can still have a faith in Christ, but they're not going to persecute you if you live like that because you're not living after righteousness. But the moment you turn your eyes or your lifestyle toward a lifestyle of righteousness, you better expect some response from the world. The world doesn't hate you. Don't get me that wrong. The world hates the righteousness that you stand for. It always has and it always will. So again, let's man up. Let's realize that this could happen to any one of us, as I said, in different shapes and form, but that's okay. It proves the legitimacy of our faith and it proves the fact that we're doing it right. Think about that today. Guys, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.